What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Bill and in today's video we're going to let the Bronco breathe a little bit more. If you're not familiar with the Bronco, this is a 2.7. I do have the Panda Motorworks tuner on there and I do have the Morimoto, or I'm sorry, Mishimoto high mount intercooler in there and an AFE exhaust. One thing I don't have on here yet is a cold air intake. Uh, I haven't really seen a need. This one's been perfectly fine. I saw a couple on the market. It didn't seem to, like they would make much of a difference. And then the engine one came out and I was like, okay, that looks like it makes a difference. The way the air flows, the air flow right out of here, it's split a bit better, or thicker tubing. And then I still don't know why everybody that sees this thinks that this boot is being sucked in, but that's just how it is from the factory. It's actually designed to look like that. We're gonna open up that, hopefully with the engine. Now, I don't expect, I know people start saying, oh, that's a waste of money. It's not gonna do anything. I think engine on their site claims 20, like 25 extra horsepower and 25 extra uh, pounds of torque. I don't know if I believe that. Maybe I believe maybe five to five to ten in that range possibly. But then it, it's when in combination with that and then with the exhaust and the upgraded intercooler. Um, and eventually I'll I'm going to do upgraded intercooler pipes and then probably down pipes as well and higher flow cats um, It's all of the little things like a couple of things and then and then tuning on top of that all the things combined do make a difference but I mean if all you're going to do is put on a cold air intake and expect it turn your brick of a Bronco into a race car, that's not going to happen. But when you combine it with the other things, it's going to give it some more horsepower. It's going to give it some more torque and it's going to help push these bigger tires, bigger and heavier tires and heavier bumpers and everything else. It's going to help with all those things. So with all that said, let's go ahead and get into uh, replacing this. It does replace this intake piping here, which uh, in order to take that out, we do have to take these intercooler pipes out. So let's get started with that. Looks to be about an eight millimeter and it is. There's one on the inside over here, one over here. And then we've got another Christmas tree right here. Pop that off of there. Just be able to turn, grab some channel locks. Uh, got that clamp off of there at least. So we slide that. Disconnector blow off valve should just slide off of there. There we go. So we got our blow off valve disconnected, intake, and then we can come over to this side. Now over here we got a bit more to disconnect. There's Y pipe down here. All right, and so where this is going down and connecting, it's actually easier 
to come down and right loosen that bolt seems to be the easier way to easier spot to access that through the wheel well and get a seven millimeter on there so now the only thing holding it in is this little doodad there it seems to snap in and I don't want to force it too hard and break it to getting it out go ahead loosen this should be able to pull that off of there let me go ahead get this out of the way now I've seen a couple things that just said pull this out but nothing said how to I guess it just pops out of there there it goes yeah I just finally it just popped out of there Nice, you know, why right not in the video showed pulling this out because it's kind of in the box. Alright, well, we'll just leave it there. <laughs> it's out of the way. We can get to everything down here. So, what we need to disconnect now are these vent tubes so this one with the red there should be a button underneath all right so i went ahead and disconnected this side uh to make it easier for now once we can get back in there we'll we'll get the other side disconnected but what we'll need to do now a clamp here and loosen that up and then clamp right here on this side go ahead and loosen that up and then one screw there and we should be able to take this off of there And now, need to get the rest of this out. And there's a small, I don't know how well you can see it. I'll try to point to it down there. A seven millimeter bolt holding on, clamping that there. Let's see if I can't get to it through the wheel well like I was able to on the other side. Now this whole thing should just pull off of there now. Ah, well, there's also another eight millimeter screw on the side there. So not only was there that boot, but there's this piece here and there's a eight millimeter bolt holding it in where you probably can't even see where my finger's at. But down in there, there. Now hopefully you can see that screw right there that's coming out at the side. So that was going into to the side there so now that should pull out now that that's loose we can pull it up all right now we have one last connector here and they provided a tool in the kit to help us and if you see there's two little bumps on top of that 
and if you snap that in there's two bumps on that it should push in And it should just pop out. So now once it push that in, this whole thing should pop out. Like so. Now we can take this off. Now it's easier to get this hose off too. Pushing that white button. Now that we got all the air tubes out of the way, we can go ahead. We're going to pull the air box itself out. So there's a couple of Christmas trees and then there's this connector here we have all that disconnected and we want to pull this little guy that's holding this in this clamp here. I want to go ahead and loosen that up. That should be plenty loose enough. And then on the body there's just this 8 millimeter bolt here. I believe it's 8 millimeter. Yes. And the whole air box should just come out now. Looks like we got one more Christmas tree underneath here to disconnect. There we go. Now we can pull the whole air box out. All right, before we go any further, just a quick comparison between the two. So this is the stock air box. This is obviously the new air box. The air intake itself area is significantly larger uh, it's got these little screws and it's got an opening on the side if you want to do a snorkel you can connect the snorkel to that side and then there's a blank off plate to put on there we're not doing a snorkel but that's there but you can see definitely a significant increase in the size of the air intake itself one thing I noticed though that the OEM does is it's got this little trap door to let any heavy stuff out before it goes in. This does not have it. But, and we'll open up the air filters and look at the difference in the filters. Uh, this, like the filter's almost touching the bottom, so if anything got in there, it would be kind of sitting in the dirt, where this is significantly deeper. But it doesn't seem like there's any way to, anything, any drainage or any way to, if you get water in there for it to, to drain out. So maybe we might need to drill some drain holes or something. Yeah, well, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it, but just a slight difference. And like it, what I was mentioning too, the way the air comes in and just hits a brick wall pretty much. And air goes in two directions where with the engine it's uh, significantly larger and the air coming off in each direction goes, uh, you know, much much larger passageway so in theory that should allow more air through so we'll see it looks like you haven't set up any home kit accessories i you wasn't can... talking to you and then the last piece we still need to take off is 
this piece going to the turbo. To do that, we gotta squeeze this clamp and pull this off of there. See that, but on the bottom side of this, there's what feels like probably a 10 millimeter bolt in there. Yeah, I still don't understand that design. I'm sure, and if you look in there, I'm sure there's a reason. Maybe it causes turbulence in the air, or I'm sure somebody much smarter than me designed it that way on purpose and for a reason I just don't know what that is but anyway let me find see if I can't get this 10 millimeter I think it is let me check bolt off of the bottom of there and then undo the clamp on the turbo uh can't even see where it's at so couldn't really show you how me taking it out but I was just removing the 10 millimeter bolt so this should all be loose now and you just gotta squeeze that clamp tight and pull that off the turbo. So, all right. There's a good look at one of the turbos, if you haven't seen them. They're not huge, but they get the job done. The filter, it just takes a quarter turn and comes out. And, and that is the new air filter that we're going to be switching to. Before we do anything, before we put this in though, we got to take this grommet. And we're going to take it out and we got to put it, reuse it in here. All right, this little metal insert should just I'll pop that out. And when that's out, then the rubber piece should be a little easier to pull through. And just how we pulled that out, we're going to install that right here in this spot, through there. There we go. And then take that metal insert. Just push that in, and there we go. Now we can take the in box, the air box. There's these two little tabs here, and there's two little holes where they'll drop into. Now, said so this side just butts up against the interior for now. It should just drop in here. And get those two little pins set up and drop in. And then that's going to sit in place. And this little guy that we took out of there can go right back. And hold that in. Now normally this much is the airflow. It's just a support inside this whole thing is open. That side's open. So definitely can see where you get more airflow with this. Now if we take the the same bolt, it should be the eight millimeter bolt that we took out of the frame over here it's going to go in we got to go in through the inside because it's 
The box is a bit bigger. And that screw and that bolt's just gonna go back in the same spot we took it out. All right, there we go. Nice and snug. And our air box is in there. All right, so here on the factory air box, we need to take this sensor out. It should just push in and twist. Now it should just turn and pop it out of there. There it goes. And we're gonna have to transfer it over here. So they give you a little rubber insert and then two screws. And these screws are tiny. There's two two and a half a yeah two two point five hex. A tiny little bugger. And then we can take our sensor. And now this is about ready to go in. First we need to put the air filter. I said there's definitely a difference in the filters. And this should just go in like so. Twist a quarter turn. And it's in place. All right, we're gonna go ahead, make sure turbo's clean, make sure there's nothing in there. You don't want anything going in your turbo, that's for sure. And now this boot is just gonna slide on there. You want to make sure that it's seated all the way. And you want to make sure that you're putting that clamp somewhere that's access easily accessible. I think turning it towards the wheel well is going to work better. And then we can come down and we got a straight shot right there. And we can see that we're not fully seated underneath. Oh, good thing we did do that. All right. And now we got a straight shot. Just tighten that clamp up. Now we want to make sure we've got this clamp on the filter and then we've got this clamp over here now let's make sure let's take a look underneath yeah that clamp will work there Go ahead, fit this in there. I have a feeling this boot's going to be easier to put on here first. So I'm going to go ahead and undo what I just did. Because that is not lining up easily. I'm going to go ahead and put this on here because. This seems to be a little tighter of a fit. There we go. So, I'm not going to tighten that completely. I get it so it's not flopping around. And we can maneuver it into a 
good spot. There we go, now we're looking better. Make sure the bottom is on there. Flush up against the turbo. Now this was the piece that was down under there that we had all everything connected to and it had that one rubber grommet that the intercooler pipe uh, went into. So we want to pull this out of here and it should pop out fairly easy. There we go. And pop that out of there and then it's just going to go in through the top of this piece like so. All right, so on this end, you're gonna put this clamp. We'll go ahead, try to see which way that's gonna be sitting there, so having the clamp this way is going to be easiest or should be easiest so I'm not going to snug it all the way down but just a little bit so it's not falling all over the place make that easy to use and then we've got This side, this side, and we've got this guy. Make sure all our clamps are the right, facing the same way. Beautiful. That is going to go back down through here, where we were connected before to this black housing there. We want to make sure cl clamp is going to be on there. Uh, actually seems easier to go ahead and get that down there first. And make sure we grab our camera that's actually been sitting down there in the engine bay. There we go. I've got those on. Got the upper clamp, lower clamp on over on this side. And then we have the yellow, which went to the bottom and that should snap in here and then we have the red which should snap in there all right now I need to find the harness that was over here 
There we go. I think I called this the uh, mass airflow sensor. That's the air temperature. Air intake, air intake, air temperature, not the mass airflow, but you can reconnect that. Then we have these two standoffs. I have these standoffs, they're just gonna. Or, Screw in. And we could take one of our eight millimeter screws that we took out earlier, put that bad boy back in. Now I need to go ahead and reinstall. This is going to fit right down on top of there where it came off of. And heal the clip off of there. Want that to pop down. I want to make sure that's all the way down, which it appears to be. And we can go ahead. Let's put that. Get our hose back in there. All right, so that part's good to go. We've got this connected, We've got everything tightened up over there. We can go ahead and start connecting all of this. Which to start with, we'll just reconnect that. That should fall on there. All right, and then these should fit on our posts there. All right, that's popped in there now. Those are popped in. Throw the nuts on there. And then make sure this is hoses on. And then connector blow off valve. And I believe that is it. Well, we got two extra screws. That's a sign of a job well done. Now, uh, cause these were used here, but now they're using these isolators with the nuts. So these screws are being replaced. So yeah. Let me get my tools all cleaned up. Uh, go over, go over everything. Make sure everything's tightened down, and we'll start it up and see how it sounds. So let's just do a quick trip around the block. I don't expect, like I said, I don't expect to feel like a huge difference or anything, but. We'll see. Should sound a little different.
could definitely hear the turbos. Uh, more than I could, that's for sure. You can hear the, the blow off a bit more. Yeah, I mean, it drives, drives like it drove before. I definitely did notice a bit more noise, uh, especially with the, the blow off, like the turbo blow off, I could hear it a little bit um, and definitely hear a bit more intake noise. Uh, but time will tell. We'll see how how it runs. Uh, see if there's any. I'll reset my gas mileage. See if there's any change in gas mileage at all, or anything like that. Uh, and yeah, we'll give it some time. See uh, see how it acts. I'm uh, curious to see how long it, that filter stays clean. Because that is definitely going to be a bigger pain to change out that filter than it is changing out the stock filter, that's for sure. But I uh, will keep you updated and let you know. So, and with that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up. Um, appreciate you watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, uh, hit that thumbs up button. If you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, hit the subscribe button. And we'll see you next time.